Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. York and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today's Friday, August 18th, 2022, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Brethren, since we have the same spirit of faith as he who had wrote, I believe and so I spoke, we too believe and so we speak knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed every day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, because we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew Chapter 24, verses 27 through 33, and verses 42 through 51. Let us be attentive. The Lord said to his disciples, As the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call. And they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as the branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you will know that he is near, at the very gates. Watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this that if the householder had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have watched and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his master has set over his household, to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, My master is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and eats and drinks with the drunken, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and in an hour he does not know, and will punish him, and put him with the hypocrites. Their men will weep, and gnash their teeth. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. So in today's gospel, we have the next step, that is, our Lord's great and fearful second coming, and all the things that are going to take place when he arrives. He will be seen descending from heaven as on a cloud with a great trumpet blast and with all the angels at his command. And very soon we will see exactly what it is that he is going to do upon his great and fearful second coming, the story of the sheep and the goats. He will come to judge all nations, to judge everyone based on what they have done, not have they kept the name of Jesus and flown around in their Learjets, not quite that, but something much more serious. When we saw the naked, did we clothe them? When we saw the sick, did we visit them? When we saw the hungry, did we feed them? When we saw the thirsty, did we give them a drink? 
And we saw those in prison. Did we visit them? Because if we visited and did any of those things, for the least of the brethren, our brethren and our lords, we did it for him. And that is the essence of what it means to be a Christian. We don't do it because it means that we're going to get a fast pass to heaven. We do it because that's what Christians do. We do it because as called by his name, as Christians, people who follow after Jesus Christ, we live a life where we are seeking out Christ in our neighbor, seeing him in their eyes, watching their faces and beholding the face of God, and therefore not judging them on the basis of how wealthy or impoverished they are, not judging them on the basis of whether we agree with their lifestyle or not, not judging them on the basis of whether they're poor and dirty and filthy or living in peace and harmony and in opulence. All of those things are irrelevant because when we look at the face of a human being, we see the face of God and we need to be mindful of that so that when Jesus does come in his great and fearful second coming, we will be ready. And so all of these images that he gives are meant for our instruction to tell us that we need to be ready. The season is always white for the harvest. The time is always spent. And we need to treat every minute as if it is a gift, a gift that God has given us to return to him with interest, just as those servants who received the talents gave back double what they had been given. This is our call and our obligation. We live in a country of a lot of stuff. We live at a time when we can do pretty much anything that we put our minds to. So let us do that. Let us spend this time seeking after the kingdom of God in all of its righteousness so that all the good things will be added to us again in his great and fearful second coming. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and interesting. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Share it with your friends, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the sections below. And meanwhile, I pray that God will bless you and everyone that you love, today and always, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.